coaches, and friends. Before I start, can we just give one more round of applause for everyone who worked so hard for trying to be possible? The coaches that did it at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. and ask your parents who you owe more to. My name is Stuart Zhu, and I'm honored to share just a little about my personal journey on Eagle Swim Team, and as well as offer a few words of advice for the younger swimmers. Now, before MTG, I began in Minis, where Coach Danny would sing songs and create jingles about how we should stay on your back until you get to the wall. <laughs> and, backstroke. and if you've seen my backstroke, you'll know that they didn't help enough. <laughs> After Coach Danny, like Kira, I was lucky enough to have Coach Evan and Coach Rebecca and Bonds who would dance with me on deck every time I hit best time, which used to be every time. Um, unlike Kira, however, I never made it to Silver. I spent the next three years at Rack, where I met some of my closest friends sitting before you today, like Jonas Stein and Nate Pitroff, who really turned <coughs> swimming from a pastime to a passion. Now, having left Eagles, I was able to better compare a few aspects between Eagles and other teams. And I, I get it. Everyone thinks that their team is special. But if every team is special, is any team really special? Now, having said that, Eagles is a really special team. <laughs> and if I could describe McDonough and Eagles with just one word, it wouldn't be character, commitment, or teamwork. Sorry, Coach. <laughs> Rather, I choose family. When I first started at McDonough as a freshman and rejoined Eagles, to be honest, it was an incredibly isolating experience. For the first few weeks, I ate lunch alone in the empty classrooms of the science building and sat by myself in classes. And of course, at dinner, when my mom and dad would ask me how school was going, I'd put on a smile and say the usual, good. <laughs> like any other high schooler, just trying to finish dinner as soon as possible to hide in the room. Luckily for me, this isolation didn't last long. Like many of you, I decided to go out to McDonald's homecoming game in hopes of making new friends and having a good time. However, as I stood there on the bleachers at an awkward distance from the others, I began to regret getting out of practice early for this. <laughs> and I say this not to entreat pittiness, Rather, to show you that you aren't alone in whatever you're feeling, and that it's normal to feel isolated. And just as I was about to leave and call it quits, I heard a shrill voice call my name and drag me over to where she was standing, almost against my will. She then proceeded to bombard me with questions about my swimming, school, and embarrassingly, my love life. The name of this horrifyingly extroverted girl was Megan Lee. <laughs> And she was and still is a big sister in my life. A few days later, another swimmer, Lady Metzger, invited me to sit with the swimmers at lunch who the McDonough staff have affectionately nicknamed the swim call. And they would soon become my family outside the home. Zach Smith and I began pushing each other into the pool behind Coach Wood's back. Um, Nate Sakina and I spent every waking moment playing Fortnite in school and in the drawing room. Coach also has a funny story about that. Um, Grant Kay and Aaron Frick invited me into the Minecraft server. In one instance, I had a family emergency at 2 a.m. and frantically called Justin Wynn for a ride to morning practice. And without hesitating, on the phone, he said with his cool, classic Justin voice, drop the Addy, bro. <laughs> These are just a few of the countless things that began to make Eagles and campus feel like home. Regardless if you had the best day of your life and needed someone to celebrate with, or if you just had your worst and just needed a shoulder to lean on, I have no doubt that a swimmer in the driving room could fill that role for you. <coughs> and although some things stay the same as a global pandemic hit, like Colin Bits arranging Among Us games for the boys after team meetings, or the unified groans when Coach Ward announced that we were crawling for, most things inevitably change. Namely, the once 14-person NTG that Kira and I moved up into now had nearly 30 people. I worried that in exchange for the size of this behemoth of a group, we'd be giving up things that I deeply valued, like family, connection, and most importantly, main space. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky 
did not, I was going to be worried about the landscapes. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I had nothing to be worried about. If anything, the larger group only added more personalities, more energy to the group, and each person was more unique than the last. For example, did you know that before joining Eagles, Caden Bowers, our star breaststroker, had never, in his life, had an apple. <laughs> or mayonnaise. And I've not gone one practice without laughing at some stupid joke Dean and Coos cracked while just goofing around. And without fail, I smirk after overhearing a sassy comment from uh, Summer, Taylor, and Zuzu. And it definitely would not be NTG without Taj dapping me up in the middle of the set and asking what round we're on. <laughs> and like any family, we fight over petty things. Sometimes Alex simply can't handle the extra sass I give her in the morning. Maybe Kate and Matt me one too many times during warm up. Or more likely, I'll have Simon one too many times. <laughs> but we get over it. <clears throat> Eventually. But more importantly, we help each other grow as a team and build each other up. One day, I was so overwhelmed with school and work and exhausted from practice that I simply could not care less about the mindless breaststroke drilling that I was doing. Then, I heard Kyle Bits, where is he? Kyle Bits tell me that I'm doing my drill ball. You puny little freshman. That was my immediate reaction in my head. But as I took a step back and took my first grade teacher's advice and thought a little before I spoke, I realized that he was right, and he meant well, so I swallowed my pride and thanked him for correcting me. And during the hard sets and long aerobic practices that no one likes, except for Kira, <laughs> Kyle was always the one to tell me to go faster, or do one more kick out, or on especially bad days, he just said, hang in there, Stu. And on days like those, leave it to my best friends, Simon and Nia, to check in on me and ask if everything is alright with my life. How are you feeling? How was your day? You're just hungry? <laughs> no matter what I'm going through, they always listen and find a way to make me smile or laugh. Coined by modern day poet, philosopher, and more famous musician, Conan Gray. They are my comfort crowd. And all of my successes as a student, athlete, captain, RL, and more can all be attributed to the people around me who have invested their time and effort in me. And if there's one piece of advice I'd leave the younger servers with tonight, it would be to invest in others. No one's ever had the problem of being too motivated. Maybe Nate Sakina, for those of you who know. Or Coach Ward, who still, for some reason, wakes up at 2 a.m. and takes a cold shower whenever he's feeling soft. <laughs> but for the rest of us, normal. <laughs> it's natural to have days where you just don't feel like going to practice or doing your work. I found that when I added time out of me, which I do have a lot of experience with. I, I tended to turn my meat around more when I cheered for others who were dropping and comforted others who were in my shoes. I found that practices I simply did not want to be at were more bearable when I simply encouraged others. And just as no one is too motivated, no one's problem is ever being too happy. There are hardships and adversity in everyone's life. And I found it easier to deal with my own oh, when reaching out to other people about theirs. Now look around you, at your teammates sitting at your table. Now, I challenge you to be that Kyle Bits for your teammates, who encourages without fail when he notices a struggling teammate. I challenge you to be that Simon or Mia who checks in on others without needing to be asked and never fails to put a smile on someone's face. Or that Megan Lee, who changed the high school experience of a lonely freshman just by striking conversation at a football game. Choose to invest in others because others have invested so much in you. <laughs>